it's wednesday july 20th 2022 and i'll call the board of health meeting to order um is anyone else recording this besides late cam see no one first item on the agenda is millennium fitness corp 155 millennium circle unit 106 owner of fitness center will be selling planet eats commercially processed pre-packaged products out of refrigerated units all products are produced in the main facility and shipped over. They also need, they also plan to make serve smoothies and we need to look over their license and vote if we want to give it to them. Does uh, Ed have any comments on what? Um, no, just that, um, you know, they, they were originally operating without a right license. They said they weren't aware of it. Um, we made them aware of it and they've been, they've done everything they need to do and they are now in compliance. Um, so yeah, and they're just awaiting the approval. I think they just got everything in just probably a couple, couple days ago, but they had to wait for this meeting until they could actually sell. Okay. And there's no other inspection. It's done. It's fully yeah, ready to go. All the inspections are completed. I have no questions. Now, was the permit going to Millennium Fitness Corp, or are they somebody else in there selling the stuff? Uh, the name of the company is Planet Eats. Okay. So they're the ones who want the license. Correct. Okay. And they they do plan to sell shakes at some point, but right now they they're not quite set up to do that. Um, they'll need another serve safe and um, a little more, a few other things. But as of right now, um, they're just selling the prepackaged food, or they're just um, looking to sell the prepackaged food. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'll make a motion that we approve the, um, what license is it called? Food establishment. Food permit. establishment license for Millennium Fitness Corp. Uh, doing business, I guess, as Planet Eats. Um, Plant Eats. Planet no, plan it. Plan it plan eats. eats. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Eats. Plan it eats at 155 Millennial Circle. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next to the agenda is 19 Fourth Avenue. Continue discussion from July 6th. Meet with Foresight Engineering discuss local upgrade requests and Board of Health variances. Good evening, Darren Bales from Foresight Engineering. Um, as discussed at the last meeting, I was able to rotate the leach field uh, the long way and get more than 90 feet from the abut as well. We're previously 75, so we're now 93. So I'm asking for a variance to 90. Um, no property line variances were needed to do that. I also researched the septic and well for 26 third hour, which are now shown on the plan. Um, the septic's approximate because there's not really a solid plan for it, but if they were to repair their system, it would basically go down to where the graphic scale is because uh, that's where most of their property is or on the other side of their dwelling. But that's a lot of trees right there. I'd assume they don't want to save the privacy. The other side of the house is a field. You can see their wells at the bottom by the graphic scale. So uh, the proposed well for our property is not within 100 feet of any existing septics or takes up any space of any proposed septics for immediate repair. Um, we have no problem putting the wording in the deed restriction that within one year of the water service being connected, the well will be disconnected from the dwelling. Well, I guess I'll speak first since I was probably the most concern. Um, yeah, after looking at it too and looking back, I mean, this is still I don't think this is as close as the one in the past. And that was that we had approved contingent. Um, I feel it was, they needed less square footage than this does. Um, and, you know, since that time, we've had numerous people come in trying to do the same thing. So um, I, I'm not for the new well on this, on this part. I'm good with the septic, but the well I'm not. Um, as far as, yeah, the septic, I, everything looks good on that. We moved that as far as we could. I'm in total agreement on the septic. I think it fits nicely in that corner. And I'm um, 93 feet from the well now instead of what we were 70, yeah, 70, 75, 75. Yeah. So, um, again, I'm still, I guess with Bob on the well, I, 
I did, we did look back at the one we did approve and that had pulled the meeting minutes. And when we went with the road, we were over 20,000, correct? I mean, that was, um, yep. the lot wasn't, but you had yeah, three roads yep. that was on a corner with three roads. And yep. we said, even though the square footage doesn't count to the center of the road, it's still it's debatable whether you own it or not. I, I don't want to, yep. whether I we own it or that. not, but yeah, it put us under, over the 20. Way. Yep. So with this one, I mean, you have it on here now, you're 16 two. If you figure the road, and you drew it on here, you're another 2250, brings you 18, 450. Five, yeah, almost 18, five. 18, five, which yeah, I we're under 20. So, and um, it's just something like this, where do we, we have to draw a line and be very yep. consistent because everybody down there, our other properties are looking for the same thing. So yeah, I think it's just we, a major issue down be, there. And without, if, without the know, water being completed, all those homes were updated and right. sold as, for year round homes and now they're and not, I, so. You know, we, so that one we did, just to clarify, it did with the road yep. frontage, put us over 20 and I did vote for that. Yeah, I understand um, that holding to a precedent. And we have that law that says, you know, yep. it's right here in front of me. It's actually referenced on the plan that you need 20,000 for a wall and something. This is a three bedroom also you're putting in. Yeah. Um, on a 18,000 square foot lot. Right. So you're already pumping Way over nitrogen, nitrogen yeah. loading. And now you're asking to put a well on it. Um, and I know water's coming, they paid the tie-in. I mean, yep. Uh, I just... Yeah, I understand no reason to put in a well if your concern's gonna get contaminated immediately, and, and I understand and that. It's just, like you said, this isn't the only lot. That's, yep, so no, you have just, to, what, three uh, more people <laughs> yeah. came in I know recently. several people have contacted me and I've already told them no on the phone once I looked at the properties. It's, it's like, I, Bob, do you have... Uh, do you have I'm with you. Do you think there's any... Nope, I agree with you. You know, he, if he could have got to consistent. 20, I would have been okay. Or if That's, he could have got to 1975 yep. or something, but we, I we, we just, I think we're just too far away. We're going to open up a can of worms if we're okay. I think we have, you know, me, I want to be very consistent on. Yep. Yeah, 20, you know, not have that bylaw. I mean, that bylaw is there for a reason. That yeah, you didn't know why the nitrogen loading is there. Yep. It's, um, again, and this was. It was always seasonal. It was bought as seasonal, so it, you, yep. there's no it, right. Nothing jumped out. It, it's right. Um, the only thing I might bring up on that one is, I mean, I know there was a deed restriction put on it for the tight tank. I mean, that was done not because it was tied into seasonal water, because of the tight tank. At yep. the time, it wasn't allowed for year round, so they made them put a deed restriction on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would say be um, for re I would be okay removing that if anybody else thinks, because now you're putting in a system. So when town water does come, right. you already don't have a something at the registry of deeds that says you do a deed restriction on it. Yeah, I think as soon as the COC is released, you could do that because now the system's in, it's installed, signed off, and then they I mean, can, it's still seasonal because you don't have year-round water. Yeah, I can get you but, the information. I mean, that's the just deed my opinion. I don't know if anybody agrees. Okay. But, I mean, that was put solely because you had a tight tank. Yep. And prior to 2014, before yep. they changed Title Five. Yeah, that would be good to get that removed. I mean, it just save yeah, another trip back. Yep. That is not on the deed. I mean. Are you going to put the system in? Or should we remove, should we remove it upon the hook up to the year round water? I, th I think that's better that because it is misleading when people buy yeah. it. Because yeah, because uh, it would be great if all the realtors gave them people this information, but they don't. You know, I okay. think that restriction will come off the same time as the seasonal that's already on right. it. So we'll pull everything off in one deed restriction. And you'll just well, sign one document. In the pull. form to remove that, the registry form, does that require our vote or is it just a signature? It, does it yeah, it does. Right? If it's a, yeah. it does, since the board put it there, it does require okay. the board to yeah. vote to release it as yeah. well. Was, I thought there was one. There was, maybe it was a different type of situation where it didn't require the vote. I couldn't. Yeah, no, I think it came back. Probably one Larry put, put on himself because then he could take it off himself. <laughs> so <laughs> we vote for that removal now, prior to getting town. You can vote for a continuing on. Um, so they don't have to come back, or we don't even want to. Yeah, so and then we'll just no, send you the form. I think we just want to vote it. Vote it that it uh, comes off uh, as soon as the, uh, we get evidence that the year-round water has been hooked up. Yeah, so then we'll, we'll have to submit you a form that you'll sign that will go to the registry that'll yeah. officially yeah, so then you can it. just put the form and yeah. then put it won't have to come to another meeting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That way it's it's already approved. To yeah, it's done and they know Hopefully it comes quicker. I mean, I, yep. I can only hope that they get water down there, but I don't see any other without being inconsistent and going no, up. No, I understand it's worth time. asking, so. Um, Ed, any other comments on it? Or any? 
No, like I said, I, I agree the, the septic system's a lot better, better position, uh, less less likely to contaminate the neighbors well. And um, just confirming your point that, um, yeah, with a three bedroom, yeah. you would technically need about a 30,000 square foot um, a lot. lot. So we're, you, were, you were well under that. So yep. for that, I mean, that's that, yeah, we're that about, half, you know. about half. Okay. All right, go ahead and run that out. I make a motion to approve the septic repair as drawn on 19 4th Ave, um, but do not approve the well at this time because of the uh, under the 20,000 square foot um, Lakeville bylaw uh, to 2.0. Are you going to do a separate vote on the deed restriction? No, I'll add that into it. And okay. it has a deed restriction on it to a seasonal property that is to be removed once this is tied into the municipal, uh, it's not, but uh, the private water supply yeah. of Clark Shores when it comes down the road. Um, the seasonal deed restriction can be removed at that time. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. Yep, thank you. All right, next on the agenda, betterment loan review and approve for 32 Fuller Shores Road in the amount of $58,304. Is there anything special on this one that we should know? No, everything, all the paperwork's in. It's just um, just waiting your approval. It was it was came by us uh, a couple months ago. Okay. Can I get a, anybody get a problem with it? No, I'm fine if all the paperwork's in order. And I'll make a motion we approve the betterment loan in the amount of $58,304 for the property located at 32 Fuller Shore Road. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, next on the agenda is discuss recent Board of Health agent pending items. Um, yeah, there, there are no pending items. Um, oh, actually, is this announcements as well? Or? Yeah, it's not really a pending item. Yeah. Would this fall under that other thing we're talking about? Is that pending from last week? Where does that fall under? Um, yeah, I guess yeah. we can call that pending as well. The continuation of the discussion there. Um, can I make a, a couple of announcements? Well, sure. Um, just uh, um, we're having a, a number of texts um, bites this season, uh, particularly Lyme disease. Uh, probably had 52 so far this year between uh, between Lyme um, and then um, on also um, anaplasmosis and babiosis. So probably had about nine between those two and then the rest being uh, Lyme. So it is a very bad year for ticks, although um, it's good for Triple E uh, so far this year. We haven't had any uh, really um, human cases there. Uh, it is a, a bad season for ticks, so just take precautions when you're hiking or in the woods or anything like that. That's all. Okay. And then um, the other item was the open space um, residential development that we were discussing um, at the last meeting. All right, so the planning board met last week and um, they discussed what was, some of what was said at our last meeting. Um, and some of the stuff that was said, I think, um, actually proved a lot of Bob's objections at our last meeting that um, going through the proper process to put together this open space residential development bylaw um, would have probably saw, answered all these questions and solved all these problems and, and taken care of any misunderstandings. Um, you know, there's, we have, you know, we have a say over public health in this town and there's a lot of public health components involved in this bylaw. And um, I think, you know, the way stuff's being handled is just, we just need to, to have a back and forth together where all the stuff is hashed out and then a good bylaw can be put before the town 
much like what Bob talked about in our last meeting. Um, so I asked Ed to put together um, a draft letter to send to um, the planning board. And um, I know you guys have probably read a copy of it too, but I think um, I'd like to add to it that if it's not as like a ZB, ZBRAC type of meet, um, committee that's set up, at the very least, we should have the planning board, the board of health, conservation commission all meet jointly. And maybe even some other department heads, because I know there's some other department heads that, you know, had some questions too. Um, maybe even town council, you know, I know they had some questions early on too. Just hash it all out, get it done right, and then we can move forward with it. Well, I, since, so that meeting, even though we all were unanimous on um, saying we didn't support it, but I know I'm the most vocal, so I took most of the heat at that from watching that. I got a bunch of calls, but I got big shoulders. I really don't care. It's the right thing to do. The um, Mark, I did reach out to Mark Knox the next day, and he got back to me, and he said, um, you know, I said I'd run it by tonight. Um, if we want to meet with those guys, um, you know, this is just, you know, they talk about all these towns and, and I looked into some of them, um, already. And there's, there's a lot, I mean, most of the bylaw by the time it's done, we'll have board of health stuff on it. I think before all the other stuff now, Sherborne, cause somebody mentioned that has, I mean, we should probably start with theirs and I mean, they have, I read through it, like probably the best worded one out of all the towns I've checked into. Um, but even they, I have, I brought tonight, uh, I talked to a couple of engineers I know, and I've actually brought a couple of plans of, of when they cluster stuff. And cause anybody watching this is, it's open space, but it's cluster zoning is what we're talking about. Um, and like this plan here, they have a community uh, septic for the entire property because wells and septics don't fit on small lots. We all know that. Um, the Sherborne one actually mentions you can use that um, area that's not supposed to be touched if you're gonna put in a public water supply and they can put it out in the middle of it so they can, you know, cause that needs a big radius around a public water supply. So. So even the towns that have it have all recognized that it just doesn't work on these small lots. If you don't have town water or town sewer, unless you do either a common septic system or public water supply well. So now you back up to that, we get tons of private roads in town. Um, you know, trying to, you know, you, you can write as ironclad of a homeowners association agreement as you want they still don't have a lot of teeth, you know, and especially when you're talking about at some point when they have to do a, a um, they all got to kick in some money for um, to, for the new field or something happens with the public water supply. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of them put in their regs that they can, even though they're single family houses and they look like a normal neighborhood, they call them condominiums because condominiums have a lot of teeth to them. The, a condominium, if you don't pay your condo fee, it's a super lien. That comes before everything. And the courts will take your house if you don't end up paying it. Banks actually have to get notified if you're two months behind and they start paying it because they don't want the house to go to foreclosure. They'll start paying it until they resolve it or they take the house so they don't lose the money they have into it. Um, but, <clears throat> Who here thinks if we go to town meeting and even talk about a condo reg, it's not going to pass, you know? And as I said, I brought up more than once that, you know, I think cluster zone's a good idea. And even at that last meeting, when I watched it, you know, Mark said how he grew up on a 30,000 square foot lot. Well, he's about the same age as I am. So my guess is, because I did, don't, didn't know where he lived, but my guess is that that was built before Title V when you just needed a cesspool and a well, because, you know, I'm almost 60. So, you know, these things weren't an issue. In Lakeville, 
I mean, we used to have three quarter acre lots, which is basically 30,000 square feet. And then <clears throat> they started having problems. And then, you know, and then they made them bigger, especially, you know, when you start factoring in Title V. So, so I brought, <clears throat> I brought, I just went over, and this isn't going to show up on camera. I thought the rings were going to be darker. I couldn't get over there to pick it up myself today. I had to send my wife, but I just laid out a basic little subdivision road and had them draw wells on it. And we took two or three people who didn't put their well where, you know, like if you try telling everybody, oh, the well's gonna be in the backyard, the septic's gonna stay in the front. But I don't know that you can make them do that. That's why those ZBRAC meetings were good. We had attorneys there, zoning enforcement guys, like they could answer these questions in real time. But um, I did see a couple of towns reviewing some stuff because I had some engineers tell me stuff they did in other towns <clears throat> that some towns do, will do something like that. But before they get their final approval, they have to have all their wells in and all their septics designed and show it works. So nobody's coming to us asking for variances after the first guy puts his well septic in the wrong spot and screws up the whole layout of the neighborhood. I mean, you know, I doubt anybody will want to do that, but I mean, that's if they, if they don't want to get into the public water supply of the common septics, because, you know, honestly, I don't think it's a great idea. I mean, right now, somebody, all these private roads, they all have people, you know, they, they, they just don't pay, you know, but all it's really covering is plowing the road. I mean, this is like real money. So, I mean, I'd rather say, hey, you know, this is fine if you have town water, I'm not against it. I mean, I grew up on a 20,000 square foot lot. I actually like knowing my neighbors and stuff, um, but you oh, know, sewer too, right? uh, yeah, we had water and sewer. So it's, you know, that's totally, even one of them, water or sewer, you can do this. You could, you could 15,000 square foot lots if you had either one of them, water or sewer, well, you couldn't do septics because of nitrogen loading. But then I did find out from another engineer though that we probably could because you can design, I wrote it down, but I forgot it. When you're designing a cluster zone, <clears throat> DEP allows you to take all the area of the property and do some calculation off of that after wetlands and all that come out to get your gross alpha for the whole project, which then you can divide up over. So I was told that you could have a 15, 20,000 square foot lot, or you could even have four bedrooms on a 30,000 because as long as the deed restriction is done properly on all that land that nobody's supposed to touch, that's included in some calculation for your entire, um, for the entire parcel, as, you know, as long as it's done the right way. So, so it's not even as much the size of the lots to me after learning some of this stuff, but it's like, you know, that's a perfect example. A couple of people put their wells in the wrong place and the whole subdivision is screwed. Well, never mind that. And those, and those septics are only sized for 20 minutes, right? If you get 40, 60 minutes an yeah, inch, yeah. they're going to be double the size of that. So now okay. looking, at swimming, looking at this, yeah. the soils are not consistent all the way across town. We yeah. all know that. The other thing is, is, I mean, we get questioned all the time. Why do we give out so many variances? Yeah. This is why we have neighborhoods like this where, oh, you know, we have to. the septic's been repaired two, three times. Where is it going to go? Oh yeah. I mean, you if know. it's going to be this much work just to get it in the first time, as the repairs go, back everyone's going to be. Time. It's not as small as like Cox Shores or Churchill yeah. Shores. Not that it's not that small, but yeah. still, it's still tight. It's it's like you know Keith Ave and those other that ain't put over that way, right? Oh, there's a lot of three quarter acre lots around town. Yeah. And you know, and how, in all the years I've been here, how often like do we give a variance on a seventy thousand square foot lot? Hardly ever. You can always fit them. They're always the smaller lots. But again, you know, I'm not, <clears throat> I get the point of it. I get the protecting the space because we can't afford to just keep buying every piece of land that's not developed in the town. But, <clears throat> you know, but short of having, um, you know, a public water supply or a, or a common septic system, um, you know, the, the last alternative would be for you know, the, the project does not get approved until every lot's proven in there and deed restrictions go on that say they have to put it, you know, like the well would have to be in to make sure they got a well. 
and then they would have to have a, a you know an approved septic and they would have to do it and put it there and even then they'd have to prove a reserve so probably the first repair they'd be all right with um but it's i mean it, there's a lot you know maybe i wasn't saying it good because two meetings we've said we're not in favor of this i went to town and floor and said we weren't in favor of this and then two different planning board meetings was represented that we had no problems so the last meeting again it was represented that the board of health quote has no problems with this so so there's a big disconnect of what's happening and in the reality here but you know this needs <clears throat> you know like reed sherborne a lot of it is specific to border health stuff like because we're the ones i mean we're the ones who gotta make all this stuff fit and we're the ones who gotta make sure those people can have water and sewer forever and you know like i said I, you know at first i thought you know what if you just said all walls gonna go in the back and all septic's gonna go in the front but what if you get to that one lot i mean i parked up the street last year beautiful 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 junk 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 beautiful 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 again what if you go to go to put those septics in and the guy can't put it in we say no sorry you bought a lot that's not buildable i mean and if you don't make them in, unless you have a public water or shared septic if we don't go to that extreme level of literally drop, putting a well on and proving every single lot and parking where it's going i don't know how else we could we can even try to do it but it, it there's just so much stuff involved in it and again if everybody's willing to work and put the time into it so we can go to town meeting and say yeah this will work um fine because you know <clears throat> in theory you got you know 80 acres and you could put 40 houses in there by right and well now you put 40 houses on 20 acres and we get 20 acres for free to the town that's protected that we don't have to keep hitting people up at every you know every year oh we want to buy this we want to buy that i mean it's, it's a way to protect the land but you know it just gets annoying that you know that we just can't you know even have a meeting yet i mean it's they already took it to town floor once and you know we still haven't even had a meeting to hammer out any of this stuff and and there's a lot of stuff to hammer out so for the person who doesn't think we have specific concerns i think i've laid out a ton of specific concerns now right. and you know i'd like i just like the people that are pushing this to meet with us and be serious and let's sit down and hammer this out and um you know if we're not going to do it through zebrac so we have mather who's a zoning uh, lawyer maybe we need town council to come too so we can answer that you know what can we do can we make different setbacks can we make different sizes can we make people <clears throat> you know set them up in a certain way that we're not making anybody else in the town do right. and maybe some you know we can get an answer as to why it's such a rush like yeah. if we just do it the right way you know because mm. i was told previous that like oh that if it passed the first time we're like oh there's some mistakes with it we'll just fix them at the next town meeting i'm like that's dangerous oh yeah because you know once it's a bylaw and you know a developer finds out there's there's little wiggle room here or wiggle room there they're going to come in and purchase land and get stuff done before that next meeting happens and then yeah. we're in. not to keep beating a dead horse but nobody at town meeting voted to let people build warehouses on golf courses people thought they were voting for an overlay district at the hospital property and you know that didn't go through the zebra and and two anybody who's getting a hair across it i'm not saying any of that was done illegally maliciously it, you know i'm sure all the best intentions were done on when they were doing that but that was why that committee was set up because things kept happening and we were like we're going to stop this we're not going to let this stuff happen anymore then the first thing that went through that didn't go through the process look what happened you know and you know if if a whole bunch of us had been sitting around hammering that out somebody probably would have said so it's only for the hospital why doesn't it say that you know and and i think i was told that the reason that they kind of they couldn't spot zone it i guess is is what i've been told i don't know if it's true again i wish we had a lawyer here but so so they made that reg to what they thought was as specific as they could to the hospital 
without spot zone and just one piece of property. But look what happened. Nobody ever took it through. Yeah. You know, well, I remember when and, it first and happened, I thought it was just the prop, the house built. Yeah. And that could have been at the meeting before it went to town meeting. Somebody could have reviewed it. Or town council could have said, oh, this is spot zone. Well, how do we get around that? Oh, well, we can just open it up to any other property that fits the criteria. Like, again, I don't think anybody did it to be malicious. I don't think it was underhanded. I don't think anybody tried to, but that's what happens. And, and you know, there's so many things in that <laughs> written that we talked about last week. There's like tons of May, the Board of Health May, this, these people May, May. That's one thing I learned on that committee. May and Shell are two giant meanings. Half the stuff we change with taking, you know, shells and putting it, I mean, maize and putting in shell because then we're in a position if we say, <clears throat> well, you know, well, we know we've worked in that area over there. We know that they have terrible parks and we want two parks a lot. And then, well, you only made him do one park a lot. Well, yeah. So, but we know that's all sand. Doesn't matter. We, we get opened up. The town gets opened up. It, 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 there's, there's, there can't be a bylaw that just is, you know, subject to whoever's on the board at that time's interpretation of it. it you know, I mean, Sherborne, the stuff you got to do in Sherborne, maybe it's, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, they break it right out. Their plan can't include any land in it that's over um, uh, 20 degrees. They, they have... Um, slopes in there they you, it, all the buffer zones all the other stuff like they they have bigger distances to neighboring properties just to make sure that no one's affected i mean and you got to take all those calculations out you got to park every single lot show that you can do it i mean you got to do you know almost a whole subdivision plan but <clears throat> you know but anybody that says that's too much it's it's really not because i mean derek bills road I mean, if you're cutting your road cost in half, if you're cutting your drainage and everything in half, right? You're not even touching the back half of the property. So, you know, we need four perks on every lot now. So if we make everybody do two, all right, well, they did two in the back on, you know, maybe they did 10 extra lots back there and, and stuff, but you already got all your perks out front, most of them anyway, that. So it isn't that much more money yeah. to, you know, asphalt goes with gas and diesel. Asphalt's ridiculous right now. Like, it, so it, it's a benefit to everybody. The town gets the free land. The, there's no more, in theory, there's no more density because it's proven in the, in the town did their due diligence for the residents. Um, and the developer can save a few bucks. And, um, but I mean, I just think we're really far away from, like, I think we have meetings and meetings ahead of us before we are even close to putting it on town floor, but and the, that's just my opinion. With the letter that came up, I mean, I'm in the same agreement I, I said at the last meeting too, is um, I, I just believe they need to have town water, the areas in town that are, have water available, or they have to put a, uh, public well for the whole neighborhood or mm -hmm. public septic. That's the only way I'm in favor of 30,000 square foot lots. It yeah. doesn't, a nitrogen loading and you know, somebody wants to do a four bedroom and they got a pool and it, it just doesn't work um, under the nitrogen loading on 30,000 square foot lots. Um, and I'm not for putting a treatment system, a bottom of sand in every one of these lots. Um, and also when you do these lots, the, the two I've personally done myself was an 84 lot subdivision and a 26 lot subdivision. Um, so you could do, you know, this is just a little, you, know, you get 12 lots here. I mean, I think you got 86 lots, someone pops in in town here on 30,000 square foot lot on a giant parcel of land. Oh, yeah. um, that's a lot of wells and septic in a little area. Um, and they want to do a swimming pool. And most of the times, even on 70,000 square foot lots nowadays, it's tough to not have to clear cut the most of the lot to get grading and the septic and the well in and make it work with everything and run off and keep it on your property. And some have to do drain gutter drains. Mm -hmm. um, when you do a 30,000 square foot lot, you're clear cutting the whole lot. It's yeah. just one big vacant clear cut. Yeah. You're not doing 30,000 square foot lots and leaving trees. Mm -hmm. So you're not saving any treed neighborhoods 
when you do a 30,000 square foot lot, you're clear cutting the place. Yeah. Um, it, it, so mm -hmm. you, you save 20 acres, you know, if it was, you know, 40 yeah. acres, you save 20 acres of trees, but you just clear cut 20 acres. Still, yeah. I, I don't. Um, right. And that's taken into effect that none of this is right next to wetlands, too. Right. Um, and then also we have all of the zone A in Lakeville, which yeah. I don't know if that other town has any zone A's or public water supplies, yeah. ponds yeah. in yeah. the area, but Lakeville is is full of zone A. There's, yeah. I don't know, I bet there's a, probably a thousand residents in Lake on zone A, mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Um, it, it's just, to think you want to do a more 30,000 square foot lots without a public water or a well or septic, I'm not in favor of, from a water health standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a big, For the 30,000 lot size, yeah. I, I mean, definitely it's agree just, that we, you don't need me nitrogen loading at 330. You know, when we initially had the conversation about that, I was, I was just like leery of that, like uh, leaning the same way as if it would be, they had water and maybe, if it was just water, maybe that'd be a two or two bedroom. Maybe it's a smaller system, they live in more space. If they had water, maybe it's a, maybe a little bit more flexible, but not both, you know, like, I don't know. So we did, I don't think, you know, that, that meeting we had, it was just me, Ed, and Michelle and Nancy. Um, I mean, I was leaning more towards the 40. Um, but we kind of left it open, you know, because I think not open, kind of the same idea, right? If we want to go to 30, you got to have water in the set the treatment plant or something like that. It was maybe that language would have been better is, is more what I was looking. Um, but yeah, just having the meetings to, to discuss this is... Is worth it especially yeah, the chair mark says he's open to it so maybe we can we can invite him to the next meeting however they want to handle it and, and make it a public meeting let anybody come in i mean that was the nice thing about zebrac those were all open meetings people could come in people could watch it live on television um you know it if if we're not having something like this so transparent I mean, anybody that's watching now, right? Uh, could you blame them for thinking, well, what's this all about? I watched the last two Board of Health meetings, they're not in favor of this, and they go into the planning board and say, no, the Board of Health has no problems with this. If you were just some objective person that didn't know what was going on, wouldn't you be looking at it like, what are they trying to do? The Board of Health made it clear they have problems, two meetings in a row. Like, it should all just be upfront, and you know, and, and this is just way too big of a thing. This isn't like, you know, adding you know changing a setback of uh to, to something i mean this is you know read sherborne's if you guys have some time i mean it's long but it it's very very well thought out i mean they they have they left nothing up to chance in that one and um but again they're they got like four thousand people in the town i mean i don't know if they're over an aquifer i don't know you know I, I, yet I can't dig into that much stuff, you know, during the week to try to find out all those, all those other things. But, you know, but, but some towns make it work. But again, by nothing gets approved until you don't have an approval until you put all your wells in and all your septics are designed and approves and you have to have a deed restriction to do it that way. I mean, <clears throat> it, cause that's the absolute only way to do it without town water or, 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 um, or a public water supply or something. It just, it, it just doesn't work. I mean, Ed, I'm going to give you, because we talked about it, so I'm going to leave you that map. Anybody that wants to go look at that map, we drew 100, we drew the radiuses on for wells. And all we did was take a couple of lots if the wells didn't go exactly where they should have gone. And you can see the the whole map's full of red circles. There's no place to fit anything. And then also on those lots, you're telling the people where to put their house. Oh yeah. But if I want my house in the back, I, I bought a lot. I don't want my house 20 exactly. feet off the road. So you're going to tell the people, well, you got to put your house 20 feet off the road because only it works. Yeah. And yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah, you have to do it exactly like this. And <clears throat> and again, that's where uh, like a condo, which some of the towns make you call them condos. But then they have to all match and they got to be so far in the same distances and all that but i mean you go to town meeting and even mention the word condo and it's just going to get shot down in two seconds so it's it's not even just a matter of 
of can we make it work, but can we make it work so it's palatable and people understand it and, and people agree it because, you know, I don't see, except for getting some land for free, right? There's no upside to the town for doing this. I mean, except some of the neighbors would get to know each other maybe. And, um, but it, I mean, so you, so this thing got to be done so right in, in that, <clears throat> that people can get past what it is. And, and if we don't get it to that level, then we're just spinning our heels because people are going to be just like, yeah, I don't want it. And there's a lot of people, I've talked to people, a lot of people, this could be the perfect, most best cluster zone they've ever planned, they've ever had, best, best by law. They're still not voting for it. They just don't want it. And that's their opinion. It's America. They don't have to have it if they don't want to have it. So I just think it needs a lot of time, a lot of work, and we got to get, we got to get people all on the same page. Ed, did you want to, you want to say, speak on anything? No, I was just going to comment on some of the comments about the public well. Um, by doing a public well, you do two things. One, like you were saying, you separate it from everything else. The other thing is public wells are heavily regulated. They're constantly tested, um, and that's the key. So one, you have an operator doing it, so you know you're getting a clean source of water. The risk you're running when you just put a private well, um, there's no regulation. You test it once they drill the well, and if you don't sell the house for 30 years, that well may not get tested for 30 years. Mm. And, th and that's one of our major concerns here, because when people don't test their wells for 30 years, they're like, oh, I, we drink it all the time, it's fine. You don't, you're not gonna taste nitrate yeah. when, 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 it, when it starts to contaminate your well. It's not something you can taste, it's not something you're gonna notice or smell or anything like that. It's just something that you're gonna be drinking and it's gonna be harming you. And that's, and that's why we want this. So like I said, your ideas of public well, that would be a very safe, way to do it you know like I said obviously you know if you have um, town water or something like that that's another one but that would be a lot better and like I said that just highlights a concern with um, putting all these wells near septics in the long term yeah when you first build them you may get clean um, you may get clean samples 10 20 years down the line it may be a lot different nitrates don't get treated even with a good septic system a modern conventional septic system nitrates really don't get treated um, what they do is you dilute them and that's why you need area and that's why you know you guys are making this case of bigger lots it's not that you guys like bigger lots a bigger lot um, often gets a safer well and that's why we're making this argument just for people who don't understand why we're we're arguing so much it's not like we don't want to get to know our neighbors we just want safe wells this is what and then I don't always agree with that open space around it to take that into consideration because if you've got 84 lots or 40 lots right close to all them wells well it doesn't matter if you got 20 acres behind you unused correct it, the, it, it the depends on it depends on the groundwater data. flow as well you know like I said if it's yeah. upstream it doesn't really factor into it you know like if, if all the um, septics like I said if all the septics in the backyard and all the wells are in the front line and, and it's flow, flowing from back to front yeah. there's going to be some problems you know? yeah. and and I didn't really understand that because I'm not an engineer but I was told that that's one of the calculations that um, yeah it's a nitrogen used to yeah, the nitrogen ag ag aggregation plan for DEP. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they and they allow you to do that, so they you know so you can factor it in that way if you, um, you know if you want to, you know. But again, it, that doesn't, <clears throat> you know, that doesn't take into consideration that they're all, you know, you're dumping it all in one smaller area or two. You know, it's not being spread out. So I don't know. I, I just and that's why we. we didn't want agriculture in the open space too, because yeah. the, the fertilizer that has nitrates in it. Same, same with athletic fields, they get a lot of fields fields too. And again, I don't get the aquifers. I know it's bad to pollute them, so I mean, I don't argue with people when they bring it up, and and um, well, you know, and all this other stuff. And, you know, we consume like, the water faster than it recharges. Yeah. You know, yeah. It becomes a finite resource. You know, with all the amount of people we have. And, yeah. All the other stuff we do. So on this one, do we let's take a vote? I mean, to send a letter to them, and uh, we already have some starts. And We've got a draft, and we can we find out. Yeah, um, you, we can send the letter, and if you want to invite anyone to the next meeting as well. Yeah, I'm fine with you and Chris if you just want to punch that up 
as the um, as the chair and then yeah, and sending that out and, okay. and chris you should probably be the one who calls mark because um yeah, the chair you should probably call him and say bob said you wanted to um i mean i got the text from it's in writing so he said he wanted to maybe have a joint meeting okay and discuss it so um you know maybe you can put the olive branch out there and um you know again if they want to do this but then just let's do it the best possible way we can yeah and um and really you should read Sherborne because they they got stuff in there that i really didn't even you know i would have never thought of in a million years like they like they paid somebody a lot of money to do that or they have some really smart people up there because that thing was pages of of uh you know what you can do what you can't do slopes and you know how much of the land you can actually count you know that they're, they're saying the slope over 20 degrees isn't um isn't uh buildable so you can't count it in there for their cluster zoning so you have to take all that stuff out before you draw your subdivision you know your your first subdivision and it's it's uh, it, it just was like if you're gonna do it you know that would be the one I think we should start with, but that's just my opinion. Again, I don't care how we get there as long as we just, you know, put it all in there and, and, and have it come out something we can uh, not be embarrassed about when we stand up at town meeting. That's all I gotta say. All right, so I'd say a motion that we, that Ed and I will punch up this letter and send it off to Mark and, um, Probably planning uh, concom, Nate, or people included there, inviting other people that we think should be included. Uh, maybe we too. just set it up, and yeah, I mean, I'd like to, you know, Nate was on that zebra. Nate has <clears throat> how it practical plays out. He he gets like, you know, Nate's very smart, especially in zoning stuff. Um, and like I said, you know, it's the more people we get. To, to put some input on it, the better. Because again, what would we have to do if we did make different zoning for Board of Health stuff that's not in Title V? And, you know, like we just make it look like we're just picking on cluster zones. And then I could have, I could see people coming and saying, well, this place got small lots and you don't make them do it. And, and you know what I mean? It's just, there's just a lot there. I mean, if you guys read through Sherborne, it's just going to be like, if this is what we're trying to do, we're not even close. So, um, okay. I'll make I, a motion that you and Ed punch I, that up. I entertained already. Oh, then I'm not doing it. <laughs> so move. So move. Get Derek to move it. So I'll move. second it. <laughs> Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll leave this for Ed just to show where. Yeah, we should just have it because we talked about it, so it should be at the office now. Trying to yeah. see how septics and wells don't fit. All right, next thing agenda was the COVID-19 update. Uh, yeah, so the number, the actual number of COVID-19s, it's, it's actually not too bad in, in the sense that we probably get about 15 a week, but we know it's a lot, lot worse. Uh, most people are testing at home um, and it's not being recorded. So um, the the new variant is the BA5, that's most dominant. There's also the BA4, but BA5 seems to be a lot more um, um, transmissible. Um, so there are a lot of cases out there. Um, people do have better immunity, a lot more people have vaccinated and a lot more people have got it at least once. But the BA5, what it does is it doesn't really matter if you had COVID uh, a different variant three, three or four months ago, you're still susceptible to this. Um, so, and also it's a, able to evade vaccines better as well. So definitely take precautions and, and be aware. And definitely if you know someone who's um, at high risk, uh, make sure that they, um, if they do start to show symptoms, make sure they call the doctor right away. Like I said, there are a lot better treatments out there now. Um, there are, you know, to even to, um, to avoid going to the hospital. But again, you know, if you do get symptoms, just please test early and also test, don't just test one day and think, okay, it's a negative, I'm okay. Um, because a lot of times you'll get symptoms and uh, an at-home test may test negative, 
but they recommend testing several days in a row. So you, if you test negative one day, test again the next day, you could get a positive even the next day. So if you test like three days of, of regular testing, it's a, it's a lot better indicator than just one test and saying, okay, it was negative. Um, unless it's a PCR test, if you actually go to a lab and um, have a PCR test, that is a more accurate test as well, if you prefer to do it that way. Uh, but definitely, you know, test often if you have symptoms. And then, like I said, if you are high at risk, make sure you call your doctor if you do test positive. Yeah, I was watching uh, something this uh, weekend. Um, there's a guy that comes on Face the Nation who's very knowledgeable about this stuff. And uh, he said that the current vaccines, they're still given, even with the BA5, you're getting some protection for um, severe cases, going yeah. into the hospital um, mm -hmm. type things but that, yeah, you should get tested right away because they have some stuff. It sounds to me kind of like Deraflu. If you get it, if you take it quick, it knocks it, you know, it knocks it down pretty quick. Um, he also said they opened it up to anybody before there was only certain ages of high risk. I think he said anybody now over 50 was eligible for the second booster. Um, and if you haven't had a shot for four months, um, that they recommended you get a second booster if you're over 50. So it's just something to watch out for. And, and I think in a couple of months going into the fall, um, they're going to have the new boosters now that should help protect against the BA4 and 5 because they're going to be more specific. But we all know as soon as they get something that works on BA4 and 5, we're going to have, you know, Omicron 14 or something. And I think we're going to be chasing it a long time. That's yeah, a good point on um, the drugs that they have. Um, so if, if you do get a positive test, you can actually call your doctor and he can prescribe it um, from a telehealth uh, thing. So a lot of times you don't actually have to go to your doctor's office. They, they are allowing that. So like I said, get tested. If you get the positive test, you call the doctor. He can actually prescribe um, like Plaxivir or one of these other drugs. Um, and, and then you can get the, the drugs to help you right away. And again, the, the sooner you get them, the, the better off you're going to be. You know? All right. Anybody else on that? No. Um, all right. Then is this a uh, just like a refresh, uh, a reminder type? Yeah. Area? So we, we had talked about it before that our, um, it's a well testing program. Um, and they were supposed to do it in, um, I think, May and June. Um, there are still a couple spots left. So um, we just wanted to let people know that um, Lakeville was um, designated as a rural community. Um, and then again, what they're trying to find is how contaminated wells are. And they're finding about that about 27% of the wells they're testing are contaminated with um, something. Um, so that's what they're doing. Like, as we were talking earlier, most people, once they buy the house, they don't test their well. So um, a lot of people are drinking contaminated water and just don't know it. This is a good way to get find out what your water is. Um, the Board of Health does not know about it. We do not get a copy. But uh, if there is something contaminated, um, the, the nonprofit that's doing it, they will contact you. They will con uh, give you information about getting a treatment system or something like that um, to do it. Like I said, there's still some spots left and they just want to make sure that all the spots get used up. Awesome. So just to cover that, it's Recap Solutions is the is the organization that's doing the well testing. The information is on the town website, um, and also um, I'll take this opportunity to plug. If you can, you can sign up to get emails from the town on the town website. You just punch your email in there, and you can it'll pick. You can ch check off whatever meetings or groups or boards or committees you want to get information from because it, it was a town-wide email sent out about this also um and it's free so um just to have that information out there for you that was the last thing on the agenda anyone else got anything else i'm good, I'm good. anybody right. motion to adjourn second all in favor aye aye aye